So something that I get asked about a lot is how to make the colors on your gaming monitor look better. How do you make them look so punchy and vibrant, whereas out of the box, they tend to look a little bit flat on most displays. And that's exactly what I wanna show you guys today. The different color settings that you should be using, the different monitor settings that you should be aware of, as well as some things to think about uh, between the different games that you might be playing. And where this is really going to make kind of the biggest impact is when it comes to first person shooters. In other words, games that rely heavily on player visibility and then being able to track the opponents clearly on your screen. If your monitor colors are inaccurate, desaturated, or if the gamma has been set incorrectly, you're plainly putting yourself at a disadvantage. Compare that to having nice, vibrant, vivid colors on your screen, which are perfectly tuned to your preference, and the player models simply pop off the screen. And some of these settings can make an impact for your single player gaming experience as well. So if that's all you play, stick around, you're sure to learn something for those games too. Now we will eventually get into the different color and gamma settings which are going to make the biggest impact on your gaming monitor visually but there there is quite a bit of personal preference uh, say a bit of variation between person to person and what they find most visually appealing but first let's just get to the stuff that everyone should be considering starting with the white point of your display this is simply how cool or warm your display looks with the ideal white point being 6500 kelvin with no tint from either the red green or blue channel this is really important because when we start to enhance the vibrancy of the panel later, we don't want that tint to get amplified because it will just look horrible. Ideally, your gaming monitor will actually have a specific color temperature setting labeled 6500K, and if so, that's the one you should be using. Otherwise, it's kind of up to you to guess which one of these preset color temperature settings looks the best and most accurate to you. Unfortunately, outside of this, there's no way to set this correctly on most monitors without a device called a colorimeter, which will set you back around one to $200. With one of those, you can use a free program called DisplayCal to then dial in the individual RGB values for your display to make sure that your white point and color temperature is set correctly. So that's the proper way to do it. The next best thing, although not perfect, would be to just look up reviews for your specific monitor where the reviewer has already done this step for you. For example, here are the RGB values that I've set on some different gaming monitors. And if you happen to have one of these, feel free to give these settings a try. Again, it won't be perfect because all gaming monitor panels are unique, but copying them over will usually always be better than what you're given out of the box. Also, these settings won't always result in a perfect 6500 Kelvin white point, but the goal here is just to get close enough and avoid any major tint. Okay, so that's all of the boring stuff over, but now we can really start making an impact. Right click the desktop and then select Nvidia control panel. Don't worry, we'll get to AMD users in just a minute too. Head over to the desktop and color settings on the left hand side, scroll down to where it says digital vibrance and increase that to around 80%. This setting without a doubt is what's going to have the biggest visual impact on making your game colors pop and stand out. Spotting and tracking enemies is now way, way easier and visually it is a much more punchier and more fun experience. I'd recommend setting this back to 50% for normal desktop use though, because viewing any other content online is quite honestly horrible with digital vibrance cranked up. Once you turn that slider up though, there really is no going back to having it off. After playing on it for a while, going back to the default 50% will make games feel like they're almost in black and white. They feel completely washed out. Now how far you turn up digital vibrance is completely up to you, the monitor you're using, and what games you're playing. For games like Valorant, Apex, CSGO, Rainbow Six, setting it between 75 and 85% can have a huge impact, but if you're playing single player games, I actually wouldn't recommend recommend using it at all. Skin tones in particular will become too saturated and the otherwise cinematic intent and color grading will be completely ruined. At most, set it to around 55% if you're using a flat looking display and maybe leave it at that. So if digital vibrance is so good then, then why not take that color slider and drag it to the max value and get the most possible vibrancy and player visibility that you can get out of your gaming monitor. Well, unfortunately it doesn't work like that on most displays and the further you drag up that slider, the more likely you are to encounter color clipping and color blobbing. When that happens, you're actually getting the reverse effect where colors and visibility actually become worse. 
worse. I find that specifically orange and red shades are what begin to really break down first, and so you end up with this blobby mess that is really hard to look at, especially if you're using a gaming monitor with a TN panel, even setting it to around 85%, you will notice some color banding and clipping which makes visibility significantly worse. For IPS panels and other wider gamut displays, the experience here is going to be way better though, and you have a lot more latitude to play with before the colors start to break down. On some IPS displays, you can actually push vibrance all the way up to 100% with very minimal clipping. This is also why I'd recommend running your monitor in the wide gamut mode, if you have the option to, over the clamped sRGB mode. Particularly, this is something that I've seen LG and ASUS give users the option to choose between, and although the non-sRGB mode will be way less accurate and not exactly what the game designers had intended the game to look like, the experience is usually way better for those first person shooters. Even in non-FPS games, I will admit I do prefer to use the wide gamut modes, but for those titles it really is up to personal preference. So yeah, we're intentionally going outside of what the art directors of the game have designed, but in return for much better player visibility and a more vibrant experience. Now apart from digital vibrance, there are actually a couple more settings that can potentially improve things for you a little bit further. That's the black equalizer setting on your monitor, if your monitor has it, and the gamma setting in the Nvidia control panel. Now these settings will be very game and monitor dependent, and just like digital vibrance, they can be used to improve the visibility. Increasing black equalizer, for example, lifts the dark color information in the blacks and the shadows, making objects and detail in the dark areas a lot easier to see. This setting is a good idea to raise in games like Warzone and CSGO, where there are a lot of dark areas. But in games like Apex and Valorant, I don't find this to be a very useful setting personally. Again, a lot of this is up to personal preference though, so play around to see what you prefer and play best with. Personally, I lower this all the way to zero on the Zowie XL 2546K since that's what gives the most dynamic range and richest color, and so spotting enemies I find is a bit easier. Another setting that I've adjusted on the Zowie is the gamma value in Nvidia's control panel. If your monitor doesn't have a black equalizer adjustment, this is a similar way that you can get more information from the blacks and shadows. Again, this is going to come down to a lot of personal preference, and although raising it does lift the blacks and shadows, it does result in an overall flatter image. Personally, again, I actually lower this on the Zowie XL2546 since the default gamma of that monitor already runs the shadows pretty high, and the games that I play aren't really that dark. Most of you probably will want to leave this untouched, but depending on your specific display, it might be worth adjusting up or down. Lowering it to 0.9 for the Zowie in games like Valorant and Apex makes for a slightly deeper looking and richer image, whereas raising it, similar to Black Equalizer, flattens the image and brings up the information in the shadows. Now aside from Nvidia's control panel, there is also the game filter overlay, which you can bring up by pressing Alt F3, and this will give you the same adjustments that we've just spoken about, plus more. However, making adjustments this way will actually negatively impact your gaming performance, lowering FPS. So I would definitely avoid making adjustments here unless you're playing a single player game and maybe the frame rate is capped or maybe the performance doesn't matter, and otherwise stick to the control panel which doesn't have any visible impact. And as for those with an AMD Radeon GPU, you can adjust the vibrance of the image as well by opening up the Radeon settings and adjusting the saturation slider in the video settings. As far as I can see, this has a pretty similar effect to what you get from Nvidia's digital vibrance, although the function might not be identical, it's pretty close. So if you're on a Radeon card, this is what you'd use instead. Unfortunately though, Radeon settings doesn't seem to have any adjustment for the display gamma, so you're limited with the settings that you have on your monitor's menu. Now if you do happen to have a colorimeter on hand, the only thing that you could do to improve the color performance of your monitor further would be a full color calibration with a software like DisplayCal. That will leave you with a color correction profile that would be automatically installed for your specific display. This isn't so important for competitive FPS games, but for story-driven single-player games, this would be one way to get the best color experience possible. Now while these settings will work and improve any display out there, you will be in the end limited by what your display can handle. So having a decent gaming monitor in the first place is a really good first step and I'll leave my current recommendations listed down below. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.